Hey there, welcome to Let's Make a Health Connection. In this podcast, we introduce, interview, and showcase the many healthcare providers and resources that we feature on our website, localhealthconnect.com. I'm Jennifer Barber, and I'm a licensed clinical social worker in Washington and Oregon, and I'm happy to be part of the Local Health Connect provider community. Today we're talking to Tina Glaussi. She is a 200-hour certified yoga instructor practicing in the Eugene area. She holds instructor positions at two local gyms uh, and started her own yoga studio just this year. Tina specializes in alignment-based hatha-style yoga and focuses on injury prevention and recovery. Her studio classes are offered in person at her Eugene studio or online over Zoom. Hi, Tina. Hi, Jen. How are you? I am doing great. I'm very excited to be talking with you today. And you are our first podcast of a Eugene provider. So that's kind of exciting. Very exciting. I'm very (laughs) happy to be here. Thanks for having me. Oh, thank you so much. So I'm really curious, um, you specifically call yourself an alignment-based yoga therapist, and I'm wondering what exactly that means for people who have never heard of that before. Yes, so it derives from the Hatha style yoga school or practice, and alignment-based yoga specifically was started by a wonderful woman named Julie Goodmistad, and she opened up her practice in Portland and is also a physical therapist. And she was the one that certified and taught my instructor, uh, Rachel Lundberg. She was the one that certified me. And so I'm of the alignment-based Julie Goodmistad lineage, which I'm so happy and proud to be a part of. But alignment-based specifically means uh, using yoga to align your mind, body, and spirit. Mm. And so using the breathing practices and meditation and your intentions to help bring everything together in alignment. And then more specifically with doing asana practices or the physical aspect of yoga, focusing on keeping your knees over your ankles, keeping your shoulders in the proper position, making sure that you're doing each pose properly so you're not injuring yourself. So I'd say that the alignment-based yoga aspect touches on both the physical and making sure you're doing the poses correctly and staying in line, but also with tuning into your mind, body, and spirit, and bringing those more together. Mm, Thank you so much for defining that. And, you know, I have to say, I've taken a couple of your classes, and when it comes to alignment and cues, you do such a good job of slowing everything down and making sure the words you use are making sure to connect with the people on the mat so that their alignment is where it needs to be. I know it, it felt like that for me. Um, that it feels like I'm doing it right when I listen to your cues. So that's super, super awesome. Yes, I'm glad you think so. And I was extremely grateful to have the opportunity to get certified within this yoga school of alignment based because of um, my being a musician and having a lot of stressors, just being a performer. And I feel like The physical aspect was great for correcting my posture and knowing that if I hold myself in a certain way, I'm not going to injure myself, but also it helps me align more spiritually and also help get rid of some of the stressors in my life and just bring everything together. So I think that I'm very fortunate to have come across um, the certification opportunity within that yoga school. And I'm excited to explore more, but I'm so happy that I started out with alignment based. It was, it's been very beneficial, but I'm glad that you feel like you know that you're being safe and that you're doing the pose right. And that's my goal with my classes is just to make everyone feel comfortable and know that they aren't going to hurt themselves if they listen to their bodies. Tina, you just mentioned something about being a musician. And Mm -hmm. I'm really curious, with a musician background, what was it that drew you to the practice of yoga? 
Yeah, so I just finished up my degree at the University of Oregon. I'm a violinist, and during my second year of school, I was playing about eight hours a day of violin straight, and holding an instrument for that long and being under that amount of stress uh, caused me to endure a stress related injury in my left arm. And I went to lots of physical therapy and doctor's appointments and those helped. And I think all kind of pushed me in the right direction, which was take care of yourself, take breaks and do things that help strengthen the stronger muscle group so that I can give my fine motor skills and my fingers a break. Mm -hmm. And I started doing some digging and had done yoga casually as a teenager Um, just online, but it wasn't until my injury that I really started looking into a physical practice that could help me grow stronger. And so I found Yoga with Adrian on YouTube for free, which was so great for me as a, um, you know, a broke college student (laughs) to be able to find time (laughs) Mm -hmm. in my busy schedule to do some yoga. And uh, eventually I just fell in love. I loved the way that it centered me and I loved the breath work and the meditation and also moving and I felt myself growing stronger and I felt my arm healing which was amazing and such a breath of fresh air after months and months of work with other um, medical practitioners that I felt helped me but wasn't really targeting the root of my injury which was stress and Mm -hmm. being a performing musician and so I felt like yoga really brought in all of the aspects that I was looking for to help me heal. And hopefully you were able to get back to playing without pain. Yes, yes. I'd say that I have learned how to stretch and breathe and take breaks um, in between playing. But yes, I'm back on the violin playing as much as I can. It's been really fun. So I'm really curious if you could tell our listeners about the certification process um, to become, uh, do you consider yourself a yoga teacher, yoga therapist? How do you, how do you call yourself? Yeah, I'd say a yoga teacher. You know, I wish I could call myself a therapist, but not quite there yet. Mm -hmm. Um, so with my 200 hour certification, that's kind of the baseline certification, um, for becoming a certified yoga instructor and being registered with the yoga Alliance. I say I loved my certification process. I had have known the teacher that certified me for years and years. She's been a really close family friend. I'd say that it was different for me because I got certified over Zoom. It was peak COVID time. I think that pushing myself to do yoga online has helped me learn how to teach online. And with this new world of ours, Hopefully, you know, that will probably be a skill that I'll use for the rest of my yoga teaching career. So over Zoom was an ideal, but it still was a great opportunity. And I learned a lot and was still able to connect with my fellow yoga teacher students. I'd say that especially uh, with Rachel Lundberg, who was the one that certified me in the Lundberg Yoga School, she did a great job of letting us personalize our yoga teaching certification, choose a topic that inspired us and just jump right in. And so with me being a musician and having this injury, Rachel encouraged me to dive into studying more of how I can help my students prevent injury and also recover if they have sustained an injury like me. And I loved that. I love that encouragement that she helped us personalize our certification experience. For anyone who is loving yoga and has been maybe going to classes for a few years and is wanting to dive deeper, I'd say starting out and finding a good 200-hour program that speaks to you is life-changing, and I would highly encourage it. It sounds like this has been such a great, a great opportunity for you. What is it that makes you unique to the yoga community? Is there something that you think stands out? Yes. Um, so I, on top of being a musician, I also have done tennis. I've ran, been an avid runner. I've been in track and field. 
Uh, I've danced. And so I'd say that I've kind of dipped my toes into a lot of different athletic fields as well. And so I know what it means to put a lot of stress on your body and to be on your feet all day and to maybe sit at a desk. And so I've also had a lot of time to come up with ideas of how to help people that may be in different fields. And so I think with me, even though I'm, you know, pretty young, I'm only 23, I've lived a full life and tried a bunch of different things. And I try to bring that that all into my yoga classes and try and make it applicable to each person. Mm -hmm. And so also with the injury prevention and recovery, um, I'd say that I do a good job of, um, yeah, giving people modifications and using props to help them uh, protect their joints and their muscles so that they never feel like they're overusing anything. Um, also, with me being certified online, and I briefly mentioned this before, I'd say that I have tried my hardest to adapt my yoga studio to be enjoyable over Zoom and the virtual experience as well. I know that a lot of people who have shown interest in my classes have said, well, I'm not so sure about taking the class online or with a mask. Thank you. Can you walk somebody through step by step how they might arrange a virtual class? So step by yeah. step, where would they go online? What would they click on? How would they get connected to you? Yeah, for sure. So I have a Facebook page it's called Tina's Yoga Studio. And on there, I have a list of my classes that I offer. Um, it's kind of in flux right now, but I have my all levels Saturday class um, at 10 a.m., And so you can click on my Facebook page and then click on events and you'll see the dates and the times listed for um, the classes that I offer. In the class page, there's a description and on there it gives a little uh, memo about what each class um, is focusing on and also my rates there. And I accept cash or Venmo or some other sort of payment. Just shoot me an email. My email is listed on there. And once you um, have an idea of how you'd like to get your payment to me, I will then um, send you a link uh, at the end of the week. So I usually send out the, the Zoom links about a day before the class so you can expect to see it in your inbox. Um, if you have any other questions, you can just shoot me an email. But all of that information is on Facebook, Tina's Yoga Studio. Mm-hmm. Awesome. Now, I'm, I'm just making it, I'm just boiling it right down. So if someone had a computer, they would click on that link and they would need to have a camera. Is that correct? Yes. Um I also am totally okay with students keeping their screen off. I have a few students that prefer to keep their camera off. But, yes, having um, access to a computer that has a Zoom account, um, you'll need to click on the Zoom link, and then it will pull up the the Zoom meeting, and you're welcome to keep the camera off. Again, I want everyone to feel comfortable and welcome and safe in their space. Uh, So, If you feel more comfortable keeping your camera off, no problem. But some people like to have their face shown and and wave and say hi and chat with the community for a bit beforehand and after. Good. I think it's kind of a given that most of us know how to navigate this, but I think there might be some people out there who, like I said, have never done this before, maybe never taken a yoga class. Maybe they've never even Zoomed a class before. And so I think it's very helpful to really... Um, just step by step. So thank you for doing that. Yeah, of course. Um, thank you, had, you. <laughs> you had mentioned something about all levels yoga on Saturday. Do you mm-hmm. have other classes as well? Yeah, so I'd say that you know, all levels yoga, I try to cater it to people that have any level of experience. So maybe they're walking in and it's their first ever, ever, ever yoga class and maybe they've been practicing for years and years. We also don't use any props, which, to be honest, Jennifer, has been a challenge for me because as an alignment-based certified yoga instructor, um, keeping people safe and helping them find 
do come in and out of the poses properly and staying within that aligned uh, yoga medium uh, without props has been a challenge because I was certified using uh, Mm -hmm. straps and chairs and blocks and blankets. So I say that the true alignment base that Julie Gunmistad started up was with the idea that there would be lots of yoga props around, but in our uh, more virtual-based and COVID-safe world, we're not able to use props in person. Um, And so to keep it kind of on the same level for both the Zoom people that are at home and may have some access to props and those in the studio, I've decided no props. That's all right. It's been fun. (laughs) And then I (laughs) I also offer a Sunday family yoga class. So that's offered at 10 a.m. on every Sunday, and that's virtual only. And so because everyone's in the comfort of their own homes and hopefully has uh, access to a chair, maybe a few blankets and some books if they don't have yoga blocks or um, a belt or a scarf if they don't have a yoga strap, for that class, I kind of bring up the heat a little bit. So I... Uh, will work people in and out of more advanced standing poses um, and use uh, help them see how props can be useful for helping their muscles relax into these deep stretches. And I'd say that the Sunday yoga family yoga class is at times a little more advanced. Sometimes we kind of take a couple steps back and do more of a restorative yoga practice, but The Sunday family yoga has been super fun for me to prepare because then I get to really push people and uh, explore the deeper, more advanced poses with the help of all of the props. So that's been really fun. And then another class that I'm thinking about adding to the schedule is a more gentle and restorative yoga class on Monday nights. That'll be at 7.30 p.m. And again, all of the information and class uh, descriptions are on Facebook Tina's Yoga Studio. So for the gentle and restorative yoga, uh, we will focus more on meditation and deep breathing and some stretching and strength practice, but mainly sitting and using uh, props and uh, the comfort of your own home to relax deeply and to prepare for the week ahead. And so I chose to offer an evening class. So just in case you work on the weekends or can't make the morning classes work for your schedule, you can hopefully join us in some gentle and slow and restorative yoga practice on Monday nights. Oh, so great that you're offering those options. Um, one last question. If somebody wants to find you and have a class in person, where might they find your studios? Perfect. Yes. Yeah, so I rent out an hour every Saturday at a studio called Platform 360. And a few other classes are offered there. It's a great space, big windows plenty of light and it's on a on the second story of a building and so it's not as accessible um, for those that can't climb up to flights of stairs which is sad for me and I may end up cho- uh, choosing to rent out a different space um, but for now that's what's working but it's on um, 18th and Willamette so downtown Eugene area and it's been a super fun space for now. And Tina's yoga studio may be moving elsewhere, but it's been it's been a really fun space and actually very convenient for me. <laughs> <laughs> That's so great. And I'm sure that if you are going to move or change spots, that will be updated on your website, correct? Yes. Yes. Great. So the in-person uh, Platform 360 address is listed on my uh, Facebook page, with uh, the all levels yoga class because that's the one that I offer in person. The other two are just online for now. And uh, for those that may be a little hesitant doing online classes, um, I know for me, I started yoga just online. I hadn't attended an in-person class for a very long time until I just recently started teaching at the gym. Um, And you know, it's convenient. It's fun. Uh, you're in the comfort of your own home and, uh, we do try our best to connect as a community, even though we're not in the same physical space. So hopefully, uh, that won't turn you away and that 
if you're interested in doing some yoga, you'll still join with us online. Tina, thank you so much for talking with us today. And I hope that somebody out there, multiple people out there have heard you and feel like they've made a health connection today. Oh, thank you so much for having me, Jennifer. It's been a pleasure speaking with you. Good luck with your classes. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye-bye. Thanks again for listening to Let's Make a Health Connection. Find us online at localhealthconnect.com, as well as Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. Links and show notes for this interview are available on our podcast page. These interviews are really fun, and I hope you made a health connection today. We'll talk again next time. Let's Make a Health Connection, copyright 2022, all rights reserved, is the exclusive property of MBS Therapy, LLC, a Washington-based company. Local Health Connect is inclusive and does not endorse any political or religious group. Thank you again for listening, and we'll see you next time on localhealthconnect.com.